Not many people have heard of Buffalo Calf for Old Women, a Northern Cheyenne warrior who lived through the period in the 1870s when the US government was displacing the indigenous peoples of the Great Plains. But we ought to know more about her, for it was she who was responsible for killing Lieutenant George Custer at the infamous Battle of the Little Bighorn in 1876. Little is known about the background and early life of the woman who would later become central to some of the most famous events in the destruction of the Plains Indians and the American government's war on them in the 1870s. Buffalo Calf Rolled Woman, who also went more simply as Buffalo Calf Rolled or even Brave Woman, was probably born in the 1840s or early 1850s. She was part of the Cheyenne tribe an indigenous people of the Great Plains. In the 19th century, the Cheyenne were just one of a broad constellation of Native American people who inhabited the Great Plains, a broad expanse of the American mainland running west from the Great Lakes and covering the modern day US states of Kansas, Nebraska, North and South Dakota, and parts of Colorado, Iowa, Minnesota, and Montana, as well as parts of Canada, north of the Dakotas and Montana. Chief amongst the indigenous peoples of the Great Plains were the Sioux, which were divided into bands according to their dialects, Lakota, Dakota and Nakota. At the time that Buffalo Calf Rolled Woman was born, all of these indigenous peoples of the Great Plains were just beginning to feel the presence of what they considered the invaders of their homeland from the east. In the early 19th century, the United States had expanded westwards from the east coast of America into the Great Lakes region, and as cities such as Chicago ballooned in size there, groups of American and European settlers began heading out even further westwards into the Great Plains in search of new lands. It was the beginning of the end for the Great Plains Indians. The first major sign of conflict between the US government and the indigenous peoples of the Great Plains occurred in 1854, when Buffalo Calf Rolled Woman was still a child. This was the first Sioux War, which occurred between 1854 and 1856. Further conflicts followed in the 1860s, as the US government failed to uphold an agreement it had reached with some of the Sioux people in order for them to cede some of their lands to Washington in return for extensive compensation. All of these conflicts intensified after 1862, when a gold rush began in Montana, and thousands of prospectors began migrating through the Great Plains towards Grasshopper Creek and Outer Gulch, where the gold was rumoured to be in Montana. Finally, in 1868, after further unrest, the Treaty of Fort Laramie was signed between the US government and many of the indigenous peoples of the Great Plains. This reserved the Black Hills in Dakota and Wyoming for the indigenous peoples, and several other reservations in Nebraska and into Montana. But the treaty would only bring temporary peace, and Buffalo Calf Rolled Woman would be central to events when the conflict resumed in the 1870s. By the mid 1870s, Buffalo Calf Rolled Woman had married, although details of her personal life and story are very sparse before 1876. We know that she had married a man called Black Coyote and that they had two children together. These must have only been born in the early to mid 1870s, as a probably somewhat romanticised account of Buffalo Calf Rolled Woman subsequently records her as riding to war in 1876 with her baby on her back. The events which have led to Buffalo Calf Rolled Woman becoming well known began in 1874. That year, the US government sent an expedition from Bismarck in North Dakota into the Black Hills. Their goal was to find a suitable place to establish a fort here, to explore the region further, and also to investigate the potential for profitable gold mining. The expedition was led by Lieutenant Colonel George Armstrong Custer, a man who became famous himself two years later for all the wrong reasons. The expedition into the Black Hills in 1874 was a violation of the Treaty of Fort Laramie, 
But the Sioux and other Great Plains people did not react immediately. Instead, what forced them into action were subsequent events. Following the expedition, word got out that there were considerable gold seams in the Black Hills, and within weeks, prospectors and speculators looking to make their fortune began streaming into the Black Hills. At first, some of the Sioux attempted to negotiate with the US government, and sent some of its senior chiefs, Red Cloud and Spotted Tail, to Washington DC, to petition for the influx of settlers into the Black Hills to stop, but others were done with negotiating. Thus, it was that the two chiefs Sitting Bull and Crazy Horse led a confederacy of the Sioux and Cheyenne to war against the US government in 1876. The Great Sioux War, as it has become known, would see Buffalo Calf Road Woman emerge as a major figure. The first major conflict of the war, where Buffalo Calf Road Woman surfaced, was the Battle of the Rosebud on the 17th of June 1876 in the Montana Territory. Here, a force of somewhere between 1,000 and 2,000 Sioux and Cheyenne were engaged by about 900 American soldiers led by General George R. Crook near Rosebud Creek. Hours of intermittent conflict ensued, and the Sioux and Cheyenne attempted to make forays against Crook soldiers before breaking off briefly. However, eventually Crook was gaining the upper hand, and the Sioux and Cheyenne began to retreat. Then suddenly, Buffalo Calf Road Woman came riding back against Crook's forces. Her brother, the prominent Cheyenne warrior, Chief Comes in Sight, was wounded, and would have to be left on the battlefield if something wasn't done. Buffalo Calf Road Woman grabbed her brother and rode back to safety with him. Narratives of the battle indicate that this action caused the Sioux and Cheyenne to rally, and that in the hours that followed, Crook was forced to make a tactical withdrawal to await reinforcements. In honour of her actions, the people of the Great Plains came to know the battle as the fight where the girl saved her brother. The Battle of the Rosebud was, however, only a prelude to the more infamous engagement of the Great Sioux War. Just over a week after that first battle, on the 25th of June 1876, Sitting Bull and Crazy Horse deployed a force of somewhere between 2,000 and 2,500 Sioux and Cheyenne Indians along the course of the Little Bighorn River in the Crow Indian Reservation in southeastern Montana Territory. Buffalo Calf Road Woman was among them, and they were lying in wait for an expedition led by none other than Lieutenant Colonel George Custer, the same US commander who had led the expedition into the Black Hills in 1874, which had eventually led to the outbreak of the Great Sioux War. Custer had the 7th Cavalry Regiment with him of some 700 men, but this day, Custer would make a serious error. Despite reports about the strength of the Sioux and Cheyenne natives in the area, he split his command. Seeing this, Sitting Bull and Crazy Horse ordered the attack on Custer and his smaller command. They were surrounded in the ensuing ambush, and eventually, Custer and 268 of his men were killed, making it one of the foremost victories the indigenous peoples of the Great Plains ever won against the US Army. Where Buffalo Calf Road Woman comes into this is that she is now believed to have been the one who killed Custer. For all that, Custer's last stand, as it has become known in American historical tradition, is actually just a piece of US law. In fact, we know very little about what happened to Custer as a result of virtually all of the Americans in the vicinity having been killed, and the Sioux and Cheyenne being the only surviving eyewitnesses. But in 2005, a startling revelation was made. A Cheyenne elder by the name of Frank Rowland told the independent record in Montana of the Battle of Little Bighorn that the chief said to keep a vow of silence for 100 summers. 100 summers have now passed, and we're breaking our silence. He proceeded to relate how several female warriors had been waiting on the sides of the battle, when Buffalo Calf Road Woman 
rode forward and struck Custer off his horse with a club. He must have been ridden over, or cracked his head on the fall, as she was said to have killed him. Thus, Buffalo Calf Road Woman has her own place in the annals of American history as the woman who killed Custer at his last stand. Thereafter, the Battle of the Little Bighorn would become the most famous incident of the wars between the US government and the indigenous peoples of the Great Plains. In the end though, the great victory won by the Sioux and Cheyenne at the Battle of Little Bighorn was to be the peak of their fortunes in the Great Sioux War. When news of the defeat of Custer's men reached the government, additional forces were sent into the region in the autumn. As further military campaigns were mounted, in the spring of 1877, several of the tribes who were involved in the conflict began to surrender to the government. In September 1877, Crazy Horse was apprehended and killed. Sitting Bull led some of his followers over the northern border to Canada thereafter. By 1878, the war was drawn to a conclusion, and many of those who had been involved were being relocated to new Indian reservations. Large numbers of the Cheyenne people, including Buffalo Calf Road Woman, her husband Black Coyote, and their two children, were moved south to Oklahoma. And it was their confinement here which would lead to the last episode we know of in the life of the woman who killed Custer at Little Bighorn. On the reservation in Oklahoma, there was soon an outbreak of measles, which began decimating the Cheyenne there. Accordingly, in August 1878, the chiefs began organising their people to return north to their ancestral lands. Consequently, on the 8th of September, their chiefs Little Wolf, Dull Knife, Wild Hog and Left Hand led approximately 350 of the Cheyenne north from their reservation, amongst them Buffalo Calf Road Woman and her family. This trek would become known as the Northern Cheyenne Exodus. The Northern Cheyenne Exodus would eventually end in success. The main group made it back to the north and were eventually granted some lands in Montana by the federal government, where they were allowed to remain. But Buffalo Calf Road Woman and her family never made it there. Along the way, her husband Black Coyote had gotten involved in an argument with another man called Black Crane and had shot and killed him. As a result, he and his extended family members, including Buffalo Calf Road Woman, were banished from the group. Their final demise occurred in the late spring of 1879. At that time, they were involved in an incident at the Mitzbah Creek with some US soldiers. As a result, soldiers were dispatched from the nearby Fort Keogh, and on the 10th of April 1879, the small group were arrested and sent to Mile City in Montana. There, Black Coyote was charged and found guilty of murder, and was scheduled to be executed along with three of the other males in the group in early June. Buffalo Calf Road Woman though, would not live that long, and while under arrest in Miles City, she succumbed to some western illness which her system was not capable of fighting off, most likely diphtheria or malaria. Black Coyote hanged himself days before his execution could be carried out. Thus, the woman who had killed Custer at the Little Bighorn died, like so many other Native American people, not fighting on the battlefield, but from one of the many diseases introduced to the Americas by people of European descent. Thank you everyone for watching this video on Buffalo Calf Road Woman, I hope you found it interesting. Let me know what you thought of her life down below in the comments. If you have any suggestions, also leave them in the comments. And I hope you guys are subscribed and have notifications turned on to get all my videos as soon as I upload them. Anyway, that's all from me, so I'll see all of you in the next Forgotten Life. Thanks.